Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Two Minute Critique. And as always, when we start this, I like to let everyone know uh, we've got one goal, help you get better by learning from the mistakes of others. So with that in mind, let's get started right into it and let's check out what we've got this week. So I saw the images, uh, I'm pretty excited about what I'm seeing. So uh, getting better, good, good shot selection, but uh, you know, there's always room for improvement. So let's get at it. All right, first image up is a uh, well, lit portrait okay so i can't tell i'm looking at the eyes here can't quite tell if it's uh uh you know if we're looking at a window light there yeah, or an octa yeah it looks like maybe it's window light uh or an octa having a little bit tough time telling doesn't matter it's great light beautiful light problem is a lot of things that can be done uh are the easier part of this right so lighting is always the tougher part, but the easier part, the things we can control in post aren't being done with this particular image, right? So first of all, the crop is driving me batshit crazy, right? So look, here's what I would do here. Look at the, the grid that shows up here, right? So you've got a choice to make. We can put it in the third here. We can put them in the top there. That headroom isn't helping the image. So you always have to ask yourself, the space that's being left when we leave some negative space, some headroom, is it helping or hurting the image? And uh, you know, when photographers get together and they start critiquing stuff like this, if it's not helping, the argument's always ma made that it's hurting, right? So I don't see this headroom as helping. So I'd start coming down here, right? So this helps out a little bit better. Now we put him in that top third. And by bringing it in from the left here, we even this out. Uh, and so I think right out of the gate, that does make the image a little bit stronger because we're getting right to his face now. But here's the problem. His head is taking up such a small part of this frame uh, and his body in this foreground is really a distracting element. And so what I'd like to see down here is I would like this to be burned down a little bit. So there's a couple of ways to do that. How many seconds? All right. There's a couple of ways to do that, right? And so when we get in here, get our uh, brush tool, 10 seconds. Let me show you this one thing, guys. And uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. Don't focus on the technique but we can easily start burning this down just a little bit, okay? And you can see how that now gets us, this is, look, this is sloppy, guys, uh, gets us there uh, to this. And now I'd even crop in on this a little bit more, maybe get rid of that so it's not so distracting. That becomes a little bit better of a portrait. The dodging and burning, the cropping, it all helps out uh, in this particular case. So. Hopefully that helps you. Great portrait. I love the lighting on his face. There's a story there being told. Uh, I think it's really good. All right, I went way over, so we're not getting to a good start. All right, next image up. All right, so where do we begin here? So many things that are bothering me about this particular image, right? So let's do this, sorry. All right, so a couple of things, guys, that are gonna cause problems here. What's all this? Look at all this. This is just dead grass in the frame. Now, look, I'm making a lot of assumptions about the images that we look at here, right? So as I'm looking at this particular image, I'm seeing that it looks like an abandoned house. Can't quite tell uh, if it's an abandoned house or not, but it looks that way, feels that way, and maybe that's what you're going for. But that dead grass here in the foreground is, is just a distraction. There's other places she could have been placed uh, that would have allowed for this not to be such a hard horizontal line through the frame, right? And then there's all sorts of details that we have to start paying attention to. So as we get into here, okay, what I'm, what I'm seeing in here is the necklace. The necklace is causing a little bit of an issue for me. It's crooked, right? So we can fix that. Uh, the shine on her face, she is very, very shiny here and shiny here to a point where it's not good on the portrait, okay? So there's... Times where even makeup today drives me nuts, by the way, side, side note, makeup artists are using that highlighter to accentuate cheekbones and uh, this kind of T area. I, it drives me nuts from a photography perspective because it reflects back into the camera. Now, I don't believe this is the case. I'm seeing a zit here, right? We can clean that up uh, and then overall we can burn this image down, right? Because if you look at this, uh, there's some other vertical lines here that are competing for our attention, right? Uh, that are very bright. And so again, 
things we can do. I'm going to show you this. I'm just going to grab my lasso tool. Time's up, right? I'm just going to grab my lasso tool. I'm going to inverse that. This is not a Photoshop tutorial. And I'm going to add a curves layer just to quickly show you how we can burn this down, right? Again, this is, this is not a Photoshop tutorial. So I'm just showing you the start of how we can get her to pop off that scene without blending, right? So just by burning some of that down, this isn't heavy handed Photoshop. We're not beauty retouching. I'm just burning that down to get your subject to pop off that image. And it even lessens the effect of the grass. All right, next image. All right, so this is, this is a very nice image. Uh, I feel like it's a wedding portrait uh, that we're doing here. The bride is sitting there. She's holding her flowers. I kind of like the, the, the line here uh, through her. So I kind of like these li the lines of her body uh, coming this way at an angle. Doesn't bother me, but there is something that really is bothering me. Let's move my face over here. And it's this area here, guys. This is something that is really a distraction because what's happening, if you see it, is it's turning this into sem two separate images, right? So you, you always have to be careful when you're shooting like this, right? Because you see the scene, it's great, but you haven't left yourself any breathing room and you're creating this hard vertical line through the frame and in essence creating two separate shots. Hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing here uh, in creating those two separate shots. So this is something where we can fix in, uh, in post-production or fix at the time of capture. Now, I wasn't there. For all we know, off to the left is something equally as painful uh, there. I just have to assume that there's breathing room on the left or at worst case, we crop in on this a little bit and we get rid of that distracting element. Now, ho I'm hoping you see exactly what I see uh, here because the truth is this makes the image a little stronger. Now, the next problem in this image, you get if you, I hope you're seeing it, this right here, right? So we got 20 seconds. So those are that's another distracting element. But just like the other image, I'm going to show you this, guys. We've got to start learning how to just do simple dodging and burning uh, in our images. Now, listen, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I'm a naturalist. I'm a purist. Five seconds. Uh, I'm a naturalist. I'm a purist. Here's the thing, man. In the dark room, I started in the days of film. We did dodging and burning in the dark room. So you can see, again, this is heavy handed. This is not necessarily how I would do it. But look at the difference just by adding a little bit of burning, how she's popping off that frame, guys. This is not 20 hours in Photoshop. This is, I'm under pressure two minutes. You can do it. So great job. Another uh, thing that's bothering me here. Sorry, timer lady. Uh, no, you're just our timer lady. Uh, the other thing that's bothering me here is uh, just as a general rule, the bridge of the nose. So this is, it happens from time to time, but the bridge of the nose, right, is breaking the cheek, right? So what I like to have happen is, I know it's going to be hard to see me here, uh, but what I like to have happen is if you're going to turn so much to the side, too many things happening. If you're going to turn so much to the side, the rule is to generally try to keep this nose from breaking this cheek. The minute I go here and my nose breaks that and you see my eye, the, the rule is to just go profile, right? So you're either here or you're kind of here, right? You don't want to get into this area. It's a weird area. Doesn't always look pleasing. Sorry about the red lines. Makes it look like she's crying blood. All right, next image. You know, this particular image, uh, I had to look at a few times to make sure that I I, I appreciated what I, what I was looking at, right? And so... This is a tough shot, right? So right out of the gate, always getting that hair up in the air, whichever direction you're going, it is generally a tough shot to get because what you're trying to do is not only get hair, you're also trying to get expression. So getting those two things to match is not always easy. But in the spirit of how do we make this better, uh, here's a few things that did, in fact, uh, jump out at me. So I know it's going to be hard for you guys to see, but as we zoom in here, there is a pattern here on this background, and it's really difficult to see. So we have a choice to make, either light that up, right? Light that background up so that we can see it and appreciate it or get it dark, burn it all the way down so it's black. So this pattern is a tad bit 
useless. It's not helping the image, right? Something else I would like to have seen in this particular image is a hair light. Okay, so a hair light uh, would be what I would like to see to create more separation on that background, but I'm okay with what, what I'm seeing here. But a hair light would have made this even stronger. Okay, now to things I feel like you definitely could control, right? Because you may be like, oh, I don't have another light. I don't, hey, I'm just telling you how to make this better. So the next thing that could be done here that I don't know if you're all seeing, what's going on here? We lost the top of her head, man. So you got this whole thing planned out. Hair is going to come out. You missed the top. This is not helping your image. This is hurting your image. So we crop this out. This is one of those cases where the crop is not helping. And if we, if we come back in here in the spirit of cropping, right, not only did this hurt you, this is useless in the image. It doesn't matter, right? So if we, if we crop this in, right, we could have done something like this and given it a little bit more height. That black area is not useful in the particular image. And then finally, the elephant in the room. I got to wrap this up. This is killing me. Her pose is just not, she was thinking so much about her hair and her head that her pose just didn't hit the mark, right? Because she looks, look at her head, man. She's like, eh, look at my hair. It's not, it's not a pleasing portrait. So I think in a shot like this, you get overly excited because you're like, nailed the hair. But the portrait we didn't nail on this particular one, right? So I hope that makes sense, everybody. Uh, that is this week's Two Minute Critique. I hope you learned at least one thing out of this. Uh, if you like it, share the love. Click like below, subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.